there can only be one winner. Hello and welcome to The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Coming up, the sorceries tackle the most mysterious genre of magic. This takes immense concentration, quiet concentration. And the sorcerer has a shock announcement. Four more will be eliminated from the competition. Deep in the heart of the ancient English countryside, a master magician is searching for an apprentice. The kind of apprentice that I'm looking for, somebody that is dedicated, somebody that seeks to be skillful, somebody that aims for perfection. At the end of last week, four sorceries were eliminated from the magic contest. You tried very hard, and I'm very proud of the four of you. Since then, the rivalry between the remaining ten was cranked up to a whole new level. You are blaming me. Oh, no. See you. Because you demand at me. I may as well be harder than others and put me first instead of them. In today's semi-final, it's crunch time as ten become six. Tomorrow, the sorcerer will decide who will become his apprentice. Only one of the ten will be triumphant. I'm quite determined to try my hardest. Actually, I'm very determined to try my hardest. Everyone knows there are no prizes for second place. My plan is to just go for it. We really want to be the sorcerer's apprentice. They all have a chance to win, but one mistake and it could all be over. I do want to win, but there's loads of people who do also do, and I think we're all really good now. The sorceries have an appointment at the theatre. There is one last type of magic for them to study before the grand final. Mentalism, the art of mind reading and predicting the future. For example, I predict that behind me right now is a bow-legged orangutan carrying a bunch of bananas. Well, close enough. Good morning, sorceries. Good morning, sorcerer, sir. Today, we turn our hand to one of the most unusual genres. We call it mentalism. It can be the reading of a mind. It can be the sending of a thought. Maybe, Rebecca, you would join me on stage. The sorcerer will demonstrate the art of mentalism with a simple trick. I'm thinking of an image I'm going to draw it here, and I'm not going to change my mind. Make sure that nobody else sees it. He's going to transmit the image he has drawn to Rebecca using the power of his mind. OK. Put your hand out straight. Send it across to you. You are going to draw the image that I'm thinking of. Draw it right there. Nice and big. Can I see what you drew, what you thought I was thinking of? You drew a house. I drew a house. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that is when Rebecca picks up on my thoughts and she doesn't even know how she did it. Okay. Is it th isn't that crazy? Yeah. Go back to your seat. Thank you. This afternoon, the sorceries will be performing their own mentalism routine to a live audience. But before they head for class, the sorcerer has a shock announcement. I have a very important and difficult decision ahead of me in the next couple of days, and I've been dreading it. I have to, among ten of you, somehow find an apprentice. Until now, all the sorceries have believed they'd made it through to tomorrow's final. Among ten, it's impossible. So I've got to narrow the list down to six, which means, unfortunately, within 24 hours, 
another four beds will be empty. Today's performance will decide which six sorceries go through to the last stage of the competition and which four are sent packing. So, I want to see slick performances on this stage. No fumbling, no dithering. Good luck today as you seek to understand mentalism. And no doubt I will see you all at lunch. Thank you very much. The surprise elimination has driven home just how important this competition is. It would mean to me so, so, so much. I would probably cry. I would be so happy to get through to the next round. I would rather go to the final than have a thousand pounds because I could prove something to myself that I can do what I, whatever I put my mind to. If my performance is not to scratch, then we're gonna skedaddle. <laughs> right out of here. Morning, coming in. Grab seats. In five hours' time, the sorceries will be on stage performing for their places in tomorrow's final. Uh, Rebecca, I've got a word written on the back of this piece of paper. Do you know what word it is? No. Very good, 10 out of 10. Um, <laughs> again, that's another quick joke. <laughs> Joking aside, the sorceries better pay attention. They'll have to learn one of the two tricks about to be demonstrated. I would like you, Thomas, to come up and follow the instructions. Miss Evans's trick involves sensing which item is placed under which cup. I am looking, staying at the back of the room, I'm not looking. If you would, please take the apple, place it under any one of the three cups without touching the other cups. Now do the same thing with the garlic. OK. The third remaining item, the balloon, place it under the one cup that has not been used. Have you done that? So. Miss Evans wants the audience to believe she is using only the power of her mind to predict what is under which cup. That will be the apple. Oh, it's amazing, straight. That will be the garlic. Oh, <laughs> yeah! Which means the third remaining item is, of course, the balloon. Mr Knight's trick is all about foreseeing the future. Prediction. 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 Small enough prediction. That will go there. Okay, we've got a chop hat, we've got a bonnet and we've got a fez. In here I've got uh, B and I've got A. Would you like A or would you like B? Ah. Ah. <laughs> Pronounced A. That's for you. Place that around your neck. You are left with B. So you've now got five seconds to decide on which hat you would like to don. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Which hat's going to be? <laughs> of course it is. OK, so that top hat is on your head, right? You've now got a chair in mind that you want to sit down on, correct? Take a seat. Would you like the bonnet or would you like the fez? Bonnet. Bingo. <laughs> of course you do. There's the bonnet. Place the bonnet on your head. OK, you've got two <laughs> seats to choose from. At the end of the routine, Mr Knight will reveal that he had not only predicted which hat would not be chosen, but also which letter on what seat. He even gives them the chance to mix it up as much as they like. Inside here is a piece of paper. Hold on to that. If I open this up, you can see that's empty. Open that prediction and read out loud what it says. The fez was what chosen. Fantastic. And you didn't choose the fez, so that's very good. Uh, that's the first thing there. Here comes the finale. Out. Uh, we've got a board. I turn the board around. Hopefully, this should work. Uh, there you go. It matches exactly. Uh, you're on B and you are on A. <laughs> okay. To decide who will learn which trick, the sorceries enter a lucky dip. <laughs> Half will go with Miss Evans and half with Mr Knight. Boys, boys. Mr Knight, oh, I help me First of all, I'll show you how it all works, OK? Um, now, the board's a special board because it's actually a magnetic board and the paper is actually magnetic paper. So you can actually move them around in different positions. Now, how you move them around is in the back of the prediction envelope. I yeah, told you, sir. a gap. Uh, the second half of the trick is an envelope, OK? Now, the, envelope the envelope has secret compartments containing every possible outcome. And then all you're going to do is to show this completely empty is hold all your fingers over that. You can show that completely empty by opening it nice and big. And then everyone gets to see that because there's nothing in there. Miss Evans is revealing the secret behind her cups routine. Let's just say there's a few strings 
and balls attached. So this is it. Right. Now, remember, okay. now they know the secrets, the sorceries can perform their tricks. Those who have been paying attention should have no problems at all. Could you open up and read it aloud to the audience? The fez was not chosen. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie. Let's see my predictions right now. Let me just say something. It doesn't always work. But I think this time it has. <laughs> no, it hasn't. Oh, yeah. Throughout the competition, dance devil Thomas Hewson has been a confident and flamboyant performer. But he spoilt many a trick by not paying attention to detail. When you turn it around, it's not going to match the audience, all right? So you've got to remember that when you're doing it, try and do it the opposite way around. Does that make sense to you? Yes. OK. Perfect. Turn it back. Miss Evans's group have mastered the detail of their trick and are now busy developing their storylines. You don't put sweet things for sour, you like to sour taste things. Put the lemon first. Very good. You've got it down. Most of the sorceries have got mentalism sussed and are brimming with confidence. The trick's really good and it's simple and I think it's going to go really well. I have a pat art ready, a pat art, and I have the trick as well is, is easy to do, basically, and it's really effective as well. This one's, like, not too hard and obviously there's bits where you can go terribly wrong but there's only little bits and, yeah, I like this one. Now, with the patter, that's, that's the main thing to think about here. Now, but despite the looming elimination, Megan seems to have given up before she's even started. Megan, I've got a horrible feeling you're not paying attention. You're going to sit there and you're just going to do the trick half-heartedly that's not going to look good. I have got the trick. The patter is incorporating something that sounds believable into the trick. I can't think of any. Well, no, because no, you haven't really thought. You just sat there for 30 seconds and went, I can't think of anything. <laughs> it might look like she's not bothered, but underneath, Megan is totally committed. Today we've been learning a trick and um, it's really hard because I can't think of a path for it and I don't think I'll do well. The sorcerer has got wind of her fears and has invited Megan to his office. How do you feel that you're getting on? I don't know. It's just... Mm. It's a lot to take in, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But you're a bit of a thinker, aren't you? I've been thinking a lot in them in classes than actually paying attention because I've just been thinking and thinking and thinking of what to say. And then when it comes up to, like, decision of letting someone go and sending some people home, I've been thinking a lot about what to do. Throughout her time at magic school, Megan has lacked confidence in her magic ability. Oh. Everyone's really good and I don't think I'm good enough. But she's always managed to pull it off when she gets on stage. Frighten me to death. <laughs> It's not over yet. I remember you thought it was over the first time round when four went home. You thought that you were going to be among those four then, didn't you? But you weren't. So don't give up yet. There's everything to play for. And I want the very best performance from you today. OK, Megan? Is that OK? Yeah. So keep smiling, keep your chin up, and let's go for it. If I was the one that stayed, I'd be very, very happy, which I think I might have a really strong chance now I've had a talk with this elsewhere. Newly inspired Megan is rushing to catch up. This is the prediction. Show that the With the clock counting down to showtime, the sorceries have a last chance to refine their routines and perfect their patter. Hey, There you go. Yay. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ellie and I'm going to read your minds. And then this one, I had a prank on Mrs Jones, and she had a prank on Mrs Jones. And she had a prank on Mrs Jones, who had a husband called Mr Jones, who played for the Welsh rugby team. Joe has taken the importance of performance to heart. Rubia, we'll things around your head and just think of pure. Whatever you think is pure. Now think of running. But seems to have forgotten he's meant to be performing magic. Your demons will fly into the air and enter into me and my finger. <laughs> Mr Knight is pleased with the sorcery's dedication. They've got some good patter, they've got some good storylines, good jokes and great tricks. So I think uh, everyone's more confident than they normally are, yet still slightly apprehensive, because at the back of their mind, they know that four people are leaving today. Leonie Gibson's convinced she'll be one of those four. 
Just yesterday, her nerves got the better of her and she couldn't even get on stage. Hands together, please, for the one, the only, Miss Gypsy Rose. I'm really sorry, but Leonie's not feeling very well, so she won't be able to perform today. Today, she can't shake the feeling her stage fright will come back to haunt her. I'm really scared. I can't just do anything right. I'm just really scared. The Sorcery's families have gathered from all round the country to watch the all-important semi-final. She will be nervous, but she'll go for it. I mean, at this late stage, in, she really will go for it, I hope. Nervous but excited also being here today, because he's got through to the second round. Probably won't get any further knowing him, but um, <sighs> hopefully give him his, uh, <laughs> his best uh, shots and uh, entertain the audience. That's all he wants to do. Quite nerve-wracking. I think my stomach's in knots, and I think yours is too, isn't it? No, I'm, uh, I'm excited more than nervous, I think. I'm just looking forward to the show, yeah. Walk to the theatre quietly in one line. Mr Knight in the front, and I'll follow behind. As the sorceries head to the theatre, each of them knows it could be for the last time. Oh, there's nothing I want more at the moment than to stay here. So I've got kind of mixed emotions. I'm apprehensive, I'm excited, and then obviously the big one, I'm nervous. I'm feeling a, a bit worried because I don't want to leave and I don't want to make a fool of myself on stage in front of a live audience. If I don't try my best, then I know that I'll regret it. Just six sorceries will go through to tomorrow's final. Everybody's place hangs in the balance. Hopefully today we will see shining, gleaming performances from all of our ten remaining sorceries. So without further ado, let's allow the show to commence. It's make or break time. Thomas Hewson is up first. Good luck, smile. Ladies and gentlemen, sorcerer sir, of course, my name is Dance Devil because I am simply the magician who moves and grooves. Oh dear, not the best start. I'll get my prediction. Out of the envelope, they're very fiddly, you know. Very fiddly. As you can see, we have B there and A there. Is that correct? Who knows, Thomas? The audience can't see the board. Thank you. Now, this is from my point of view. Oh, no wonder he tried to hide his prediction. Thomas has got the trick wrong again. But at least he's kept the crowd entertained. In just two short weeks at Magic School, the sorceries have become true entertainers. Now, I'll do it the other way around, rub your head and pat your belly. <laughs> you look, look well, silly. <laughs> I predict I'm going to flick this and it's going to go onto my head. Who thinks I can do this? Yeah. You think I can do it? You think... So about five people out of... I don't know how many. <laughs> Here we go. Can I have a countdown from three to one? Three, two... One. Okay, I'm gonna flick it and it's gonna go onto my head. They've all raised their game and set the standard high. This takes immense concentration, quiet concentration. Oh, we're moe, oh, we're moe, oh, we're mo You're just not taking this seriously, are you? Hold it. Move out slowly. Enjoy yourself, smile. Ladies and gentlemen, sorcerer sir, my name is Miss Gypsy Rose, the circus magician. Even Leone finally manages to conquer her fears to come on and wow the crowd. I've done it again. I've eaten the prop. I needed that and I've eaten it. I have some lovely hats here. I have a funky fez, a very ladylike bonnet, and a very gentlemanly top hat. Drum roll, please. Lemon balloon! Thank you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, sorcerer sir, I'm Energy Ellie. <laughs> I'm back again, I'm gonna get the stuff. <laughs> Forgot it, sorry. Bye bye! 
sausage didn't seem very impressed. He was sitting there like, like that. But I think it went well. I'd like four people from the audience to come up. Give her a big round of applause. Come on. Frankie Rainey has always relied on his funny side to enhance his routines. That's good. Oh, come on, big round of applause. But today he seems to have forgotten about the magic completely. Round of applause for Joanne from Nottingham. Big round of applause for the props team. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And big round of applause for our lovely volunteers. While Joe has developed a unique exit strategy for his performance. Should I? Yes! <laughs> Apparently, eating raw garlic isn't the best idea for a finale. That is dedication. Do you want more garlic? I mean, do you want more Get more water. Ah! <laughs> it's stuck in my tooth it's and I can taste it. it and it's burning you. <laughs> He's such a dipstick. <laughs> While Joe is recovering outside, backstage Megan Brocklehurst is preparing for her performance. This is almost... This is what I'm scared. Smile and enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, Soul Super Sir, my name is Dolphine. Now, For the semi final, Megan puts in a performance she can be proud of. Now, the big prediction is the best. That's right, isn't it? I think you'll all agree, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, they've come a long way in one week, haven't they? Yeah. Thank you all for coming today. I shall be going to make my deliberations. Take one final bow, sorcery. <laughs> Fabulous. The sorceries are allowed a few minutes with their families whilst they wait to discover who has made it to the grand final. <laughs> With such a high standard of performances, no one can predict who the sorcerer will select. I really don't know whether I'm going to stay or whether I'm going to go. It's hard to say. I know I've got enough stage presence, but I don't know if I've got enough magic skill to get through to the final, even. I know I've tried my best and um, I've tried to give it all I've got. And, um, and if I go, then I'll be still happy walking away. I don't have a clue whether I'm staying. The source was a very unpredictable man. <laughs> what performances? Amazing. I mean, Joe, I've been really deliberating about him previously. He did a blinding performance today, didn't he? It was great. Very good. Very really funny. good. Very funny. Slick, funny exit. I thought and he gained a real rapport with the audience. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very concerned about Thomas Hewson. Yes, I am as well. Um, from what I've seen, every time he's on stage, I mean, he's got a great smile, great personality good at dancing. However, he's quite thin fingers and thumbs, which is a shame. Mm. Frankie of the Glen just all over the place. Mm. Too many volunteers. And, you know, and also, who are you? Where are you from? Clap, round of applause. And who are you? Where are you from? Round of applause. It was yeah. like a game show. Yeah, it was, not it? For me, it's Alexandra Barnes, there's Leone, and there's Ellie. And the three of them have kind of been of a similar They're level. They're on the same level, aren't they? Mm. There's no one that's higher than the others. Of course, then there's Megan, isn't there? It was nice to see her um, out of her shell a bit today, mm. enjoying being on the stage. She has progressed. She really Admittedly, is. she has progressed. You know, that last performance that she's just done was, was good, but was it as good as everyone else's? With the help of his staff, the sorcerer has reached a verdict. Only he knows which six sorceries will make it to tomorrow's grand final. Well, firstly, may I say once again, congratulations today on your performances. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Did well to be here. So, to a very difficult decision, I will read out the names, the six names of those people who will travel with me to the final. These are the names. Firstly, Mehmet Suleiman. <laughs> Thomas Power. <laughs> Thomas. 
Leonie Gibson. Joseph Savage. <laughs> Rebecca Whiteley. <laughs> and lastly, the most difficult decision of all. No. 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 Five sorceries remain. But there is room for just one more finalist. <sighs> Alexandra Barnes. For Thomas, Megan, Frankie, and Ellie, the competition is over. Right, will the six of you please line up who are travelling with us for the final lap of the journey? Bye. Bye, Megan. Bye. Needs must have. I wish to extend my hand to shake your hand and to tell you that you have all done splendidly well. You got this far. Three and a half thousand children wanted to be where you are today. You've all done so well. Now, I want you to pick up your things and follow me. <laughs> They have tried hard and learnt many skills, but in the end, there can only be one apprentice. You'd be happy for whoever wins. Yep. Obvious question. I know. I know it's not an easy thing, but how, how are you feeling? I'm feeling alright. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be sorry to see you go. You're a right character. What can you tell me about what you've enjoyed about the school? Um, I've enjoyed actually everything. Yeah. Everything's been really good. Thomas, I'm going to say goodbye with your, okay. your favourite trick. Are you ready? One, two, three. No. <laughs> and it's goodbye to Thomas. You. Thomas, it's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. It's been another tough day, which we end with four sorceries less. Frankie, Thomas Hewson, Megan and Ellie have all gone home, leaving the remaining six sorceries to go through to the grand final. And don't forget, only one of them can become the Sorcerer's Apprentice. I'll see you next time. In the last show, the Sorcerer performed his most spectacular trick yet. One, three, two, one! And one of the final six will be crowned the Sorcerer's Apprentice. The winner of the Sorcerer's Apprentice is... Who's it going to be? Well, you're going to have to come back at 5 o'clock tomorrow here on CBBC One to find out. And tune in tomorrow morning, CBBC Two, at 8 o'clock for The Sorcerer's Apprentice Extra. It's absolutely brilliant. Can't wait for tomorrow. Now, though, on CBBC One, it's time for News Round. <laughs> Hello and welcome to News Round. Here's what's coming your way today. What's happened to the summer? Floods hit northern England again and there's more rain to come. Plus an explosion causes chaos in one of the world's busiest cities. But first, the cleanup has started after yet another flood washed through parts of England yesterday. Heavy rain struck once more and worst hit was the town of Filey in the northeast of England. Sonali has the story. Weird sites like this.